Is there anything else going on before we get into Gabriel and elections and all those sorts of things that, that you wish to bring to the fore? Well, of course, there's something else. The news Bring is it. newsing, John. Um, I don't know if you saw, but I think after two weeks of uh, intense prayer circles and, and getting their money in order, uh, mm. Adidas has terminated their relationship with, with Kanye West. And it seemed like such a solid relationship, too. Yeah, they were it very much like, in love. Yeah. Uh, the press release uh, was, I think, very transparent. They said Adidas is expected mm -hmm. to have um, a short-term negative impact of up to 250 million euros um, on the company's net income. But I think if you look further down in the release, it says, but we're hoping that the Jews kick in to make up that shortfall. I guess we got some <laughs> shoes to buy, John. <laughs> the shoe cabal. Do, Jews, oh, do we no. also control the shoe cabal? The, I, I don't even know anymore uh, uh, w what, what we control. It, it's hard to say. They said it's very funny because they they were like, uh, you know, because of Q4. This is happening in Q4, which is Christmas. Uh, yeah. There's a bunch of Adidas executives just like, come on, Connie, hold it till January. I can't wait till Adidas goes overboard in in sort of uh, uh, reclaiming the Jewish sneaker buying audience. Uh -huh. And like like Nike has just do it. Uh, Adidas is going to come out with it couldn't hurt. <laughs> 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 Jews is trending on Twitter today, which is really oh, it's, I will not look at those top unless tweets. it's Hanukkah. That's not that's that's never a positive sign. Robbie Slowick, I'll ask you. Yes, uh, you are also uh, as I am uh, of the Hebraic faith. That's right. Uh, how how go bag packed? Like how on a scale of I'm just gonna fucking eat matzah in front of all my colleagues to I've got the go bag packed. How nervous are you about? Uh, all, all this that is that is going down because it has clearly exposed a very deep vein of boy that you shouldn't be able to say uh, Jews control all that although everybody who even says I, I what Kanye said was out of bounds although although yeah they they do you know they they are overrepresented. Right. There was that, that who was that like New York uh, Post writer who even said that same thing. He was like, but we do need to discuss why Jews are overrepresented. Why the fuck is that? Why? You know, w when when a group tends to have an overrepresentation in in any kind of area and which happens, why isn't there any like those Irish motherfuckers and all their policing? Like, why the fuck is it always anybody that fucked you over? In entertainment, well, that's if he's Jewish, clearly he goes back to the group and they all talk about it. Right. Yeah. What is that? I, I don't know. And it's also, I, you know, I, I try to think about how I ended up here because I guess I'm part of this now, right? But I'm like, uh, I don't know, I, I, a kid who I grew up watching uh, Mel Brooks movies and Seinfeld. I mean, I was a Jew who was influenced by Jewish stuff and I got into comedy and I submitted a blind packet and here I am. But I could. You don't need to defend or justify your participation in an industry that was created by people who were excluded from other industries. And that's where, you know, this is such an insidious road to go down because it's, it's a self-defeating loop, right? Jews control everything. That's outrageous to say that we don't want to do business with any, with you anymore. See, that is evidence that I am correct. Because if I, if I wasn't correct, I could say whatever the fuck I want and nothing would happen to my business, which is obviously like they make a cost benefit analysis at Adidas. Adidas, by the way, a German company. Mm -hmm. So I, it's a, it's a, we're in a really insidious timeline. And boy, does that dude have influence in a way that is that was actually shocking to me i was i wasn't quite like prepared for the level of influence he had to see nazis holding a sign in los angeles that said kanye was right over the 405 that i found that genuinely shocking i thought the weird part was the other sign that said college dropout rules <laughs> <laughs> yeah big fans you know what are you gonna do it's such an interesting uh conundrum because any pushback is seen as evidence of the efficacy of what he says. Yeah. But what I think has been the, the, one of the, the tougher things is to read the comments that, that follow. Because boy, is that, and especially online, people are not shy about sharing their belief. No, it's, it's everywhere. But, you know, it's, it, here's, here's what I would say. It always fucking sucks 
when your demographic becomes part of a hashtag campaign. 100%. When, when you're the ones where the black square is being put up for you, you know the shit has hit the fan somewhere. And God bless, but, you know, I don't need... I, anytime you see celebrities suddenly posting, right. like, I stand with Jews, you, you really just want to say, like, it's not, you don't, it's not about necessarily standing with and, and having that moment on Twitter... It's about understanding just how deep division goes and, and how it's used cynically for, for power as it's being done now. Yeah. But, you know, I'm curious to, this, this is completely, uh, and, and pardon me if this is insensitive, but during the George Floyd protests and the Black Lives Matter, when those, when those, you know, people put up the black squares and all that stuff, how did, what was your feeling about that? Did you feel supported or did you feel like I feel not condescended to, but a little bit, it leaves me cold in a way that I didn't expect. Like, yeah. oh, now I'm, I'm the prop. Now I'm the, it's my turn in the cement mixer. Yeah. Well, to anyone who Venmoed me during the summer of 2020, <laughs> um, I appreciated it immensely, and it meant a lot. Uh, however, yes, I agree that I think uh, seeing it didn't do much for me, and it left me uh, feeling a little numb. Yeah, and not really taken care of. Uh, it just it made me feel, I think, even more exposed. Mm -hmm. Especially if you remember during this time, John, uh, this is the summer where everyone w was finally willing to say Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. And I sort of went on a diatribe online because I was like, you know, I needed you to say that when, you know, Mike Brown was laying in the middle of the street in Ferguson. I needed you to say that uh, with Tamir Rice. I needed you to say that all these other instances of times personally and in the world where I really needed you. And I just think even now, you know, I'm not Jewish and I'm seeing all my friends, you know, posting their stories and on Twitter, I support my Jewish friends. And I'm like, <laughs> does that make them feel any less exposed in this terrible, terrible time that we're living in? I'm sure it does you know for what some it does, people. Takara, but it, for me, yeah. It makes me feel more like the other. Yeah. To be honest. It makes it is me othering. feel more separated. Yeah. It makes me feel as though uh I belong to just a different a different category of human that that needs to be tended to. And it more than anything, it it's isolating. For me. A few comedy clubs posted that that meme as well and i so i sent them all my avails i said we'll see <laughs> <laughs> you're using this to get spots i gotta do what i gotta clubs? do because there's no cabal getting me spots john <laughs> let me tell you something and this is what i always respect about comics they are more comic than man <laughs> that's true <laughs> we can't in turn this it off. situation well let's just listen this is it, it's a an ongoing conversation uh, uh, hashtag to be continued. Hmm. Uh, but, but more importantly, we have a guest to get to and let's get to him. Are you in England right now, Gabriel? I am in London, England, John. Hello. And, and how is the, the new prime minister? He's literally just, he's hot off the press. Uh, how is he? Well, it's, <laughs> it's early to tell. He's only our uh, third prime minister in uh, as many yes. months almost. Um, so this is, this is Rishi Sunak. Rishi Sunak, yes. I very much hope that he'll still be the prime minister by the time you air this podcast. <laughs> uh, I have heard that he has resigned. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Don't say that. We're all going he nuts He has been here. replaced by Neville Chamberlain. <laughs> <laughs> it's peace in our time. If only. If, if only. Is so, so many... Sanity in our time, maybe. Sanity in our time. So many firsts in these, in these past few weeks. You had... Uh, you had Boris Johnson, who was was uh, deposed because he, he drank. Had a, 
Yeah, well, party. no, I think he threw think a party. He threw a party, and uh, 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 but but I think he he was deposed because of his. Uh, creative, uh, elastic relationship with factuality. Oh, see, that's why we <laughs> wow. elect people. That, now, see, that's very, now that's let, let's, let's get into this very quickly because, so that's apparently something that doesn't fly in, in, Not, in England because here it's considered, I think, uh, the prime a prerequisite plus, plus. for running for office. Yeah, I have been sort of thinking about like, what are the, what are the differences and what are the commonalities in our politics mm -hmm. right now? Because they both seem pretty crazy. Um, and I, I think uh, one of the things that gives me hope about um, about our politics is that, uh, yeah, we, 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 I mean, I have to be careful what I say, even though I left the BBC. Have I, did I tell you that, John? I've left the BBC, so uh, officially. No, I did not know you left the BBC. What, 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 were you fired by... Are, is the BBC controlled by a Jewish cabal, or is that just the American media? Of course media? it is. Is of that? Oh, it, it is. is. Okay, good. Okay, of course I, it is. I, I knew. I, I wasn't sure if we had international I, reach I, or if it was merely. No, no, no. Uh, you're you're, you're United totally States international. Phenomenon. You're totally international. Uh, Thank God. Uh, All right. Fair enough. <laughs> I was fired for trying to expose the cabal. Obviously. Um, oh, well done. <laughs> uh, no, no. I I decided to go freelance. I I thought uh, you know the BBC is a great place, and I I love public service broadcasting. And I think it's very important. Mm -hmm. Um, and you guys would really do well to have a BBC. It'd be great if you did, um, because it, it is quite good for the health of your sort of public media. But anyway, I thought there was a lot of other we stuff do going have, on. Now, we do have a public media. We have a PBS. I know, uh, I know. But it, it's no match for the, the histrionics of our 24-hour of our yeah. uh, news channels and, and the cable universe. The sober uh, analysis and direct-to-camera factual presentation does not make it's, it's uh it's not as much fun no one's watching it's, boy it's not <laughs> yeah we're, we're so, talking about a culture that loves to supersize we like to throw yeah. a little cheese on it see how it goes so so i i left because i wanted to try a bit of supersizing let's see um nice. uh, but i <laughs> you don't approve i'm, Takara, I'm hearing... <laughs> i don't even Takara, what was that sound <laughs> you know i i was just i was trying to hold back judgment and the sound came out <laughs> i will do better as you talk judgment escaped hmm. involuntarily uh -huh. um uh, no look i uh, so basically I, I can now say whatever i like but having been institutionalized for oh 21 years, I worked for the corporation. 21 years. 21 years. Gabriel, this is a big moment. Let it rip. Say something fucking crazy. Let's do yeah. it. So, Let's hear it. <laughs> so I did almost say something crazy, right? I said one of the, like, one of the positive things that I think I have identified out of all the craziness in our mm -hmm. politics over the past few months is that we uh, had a prime minister, Boris Johnson, who had a... Uh, let's say a, a sort of tenuous relationship with the truth mm -hmm. and our governing party, the conservatives, instead of kind of doubling down and going, don't believe the evidence of your eyes. This man is telling the truth. They were all just mm -hmm. like, actually, do you know what? This, this, this can't stand. You're fired. Now I thought that was very positive. Uh, mm -hmm. I probably like wouldn't be able to say that if I was working for the BBC because you have to be very, 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 very careful about everything. Wait, you if you were working for the BBC and and there was a prime minister who was lying about uh, all manner of things in terms of uh, the hypocrisy of his pandemic behavior and uh, the cover-ups for various, uh, let's say, harassment scandals and, th and those types of things, and, and, and the BBC, you would not be allowed to say, yeah, it's a net positive that the lying guy uh, has has been called to account. Yeah, right. We, you, you know, you could talk about it in in terms of saying, well, the evidence shows that this uh, didn't. That, 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 that something else happened from Gabriel. We're going to have to rewire uh -huh. your brain. Yes. I know. Yeah. We're going to oh have to. <laughs> There's only so many ways you can say a, a lapsadaisical relationship <laughs> to facts. Okay, he <laughs> lied. Oh, oh my there we gosh. go. Oh, now we're done. Release, Gosh. release. <laughs> Welcome to America. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, but but so they got rid of him, um, which was kind of uh, w which surprised me and was positive. And but then, unfortunately, mm -hmm. in the process of getting rid of him, they had a the, the the ruling party, the governing party, the Conservatives, had a kind of collective, convulsive, nervous breakdown, uh, during which they elected 
uh, somebody else through just the members. So like a, a, a couple of tens of thousands of people right. in England elected the new prime minister. Who was so Boris, Boris Johnson was elected by millions of people. Uh, yes. the Conservative Party, and then he was appointed by the Conservative Party. When Liz Truss was selected, that was just, who who was voting then? Just the MPs or who was, who was voting? No, no, it was, it was, the, it, it was the MPs who, who came down to the last few candidates. Uh, that mm -hmm. was Liz Truss and uh, Rishi Sunak. But then it mm -hmm. went out to the Shires. So it mm. was the, uh, you always have to ask the Shires. The Shires. Yeah. The Shires. When do the ho when do the Hobbits vote? <laughs> I know I know the That's, Shires vote, but when do the Hobbits when, weigh in? When they when they depose uh, Rishi Sunak, that's when the Hobbits get to go, and that's when we get uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and that's when that, and that's when Gollum is installed. Oh, in number ten. The precious. <laughs> Um, so, so the best is yet to come. Um, so, but Liz Truss was was elected by Conservative Party members in the shires. Um, mm -hmm. So that's kind of uh, you know deep Middle England, um, very middle aged people, quite yeah. quite sort of a very white, very middle aged uh, constituency. Um, Gabriel, but what gives them the right? Because it was like one hundred and sixty thousand people, right? How are they Something chosen like as the ones who get to vote? Who who so are these people? They're members of the party. They are members of the Conservative Party, and members of the Conservative Party have a right to choose their leader. And if the previous leader also happened to be the Prime Minister, then they effectively get to choose the next Prime Minister. Got it. And 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 remember that you know the Conservative Party and the Labour Party aren't really kind of mass membership organisations in the way that you have, you know, mass membership of the Democratic Party and the Republican Party in the United States. These are very mm -hmm. small numbers of people. So effectively, a very small number of people in the tens of thousands chose our previous Prime Minister, Liz Truss. Liz Truss. Now, she had a very tenuous relationship with economic cohesion. <laughs> <laughs> so she, Liz, Liz Wait, Truss, wait, but you, you, skipped, you skipped the main thing that happened. So, so yes. she was elected prime minister and then she went off to see the queen and the queen said, hey, would you like to form a government? And then dropped dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She knew. She knew. She knew it was coming. <laughs> There, there are very few people who know when to exit at the right time. But I think that was one of those where, where she was like, so this ship is called the Titanic then. And then Liz Truss was like, yeah. She goes, I'm just going to get off here. Yes. I'll, I'll, I'll hand that over to, to, uh, to you, Charlie boy. Good luck. Yes. Um, Good luck, sir. How many Liz's uh, do we need in power at once? Yeah. Well, there, there was all this, uh, yeah, there was all this kind of talk going around about the Grim Reaper being sent down to fetch Liz and, you know, coming back with the wrong one. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Brutal. It's horrible. Brutal. Anyway, so so that happened, and I had always thought that when the Queen dies, I, I had mm -hmm. always been convinced that this country would absolutely lose its shit. Can I say that? Am I allowed to say that? You I'm can gonna, say oh, lose yeah. their fucking shit. Can I? You can say whatever you want. Absolutely. I was convinced that this country was mm -hmm. going to lose its fucking shit. Whoa! Because, hey, okay, Gabriel, Gabriel take it easy, down, please. On, <laughs> because I tell you, this isn't this isn't the BBC. <laughs> Settle down. We have standards here. Um, I tell you why, because basically, um, this country has kind of been cooking on fumes since the 1950s. Right? We've been we've been cooking on the fumes of empire since 1952 because mm -hmm. we've mm -hmm. had uh, this really m magnificent person on the throne who was like, you, you can't imagine a more dedicated public servant, right? This this woman was dedicated to public service, come rain or come shine. Well, let's, go. let's, she was well paid. It wasn't volunteer work. She, it wasn't it was, volunteer this work. Is, this is not a Mother Teresa situation. <laughs> this is, I mean, she, she was a lovely woman. She did a great job, but nice yeah. house. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Nice couple of houses. Nice castle. Yeah. Yeah. Nice castle. Yeah. Fine. Fine. Point. Point taken. Point one. <laughs> Wait, I thought Americans loved the Queen. What are you talking about? Americans love the Queen. We're, we're, oh, we're the ones. She who... seemed she seemed lovely, but I don't know if you know this, but we had a whole uh, to do. This was years ago you did? Uh, about escaping this type of, <laughs> of monarchy system. Yeah, no. I'll, you know what? I'm going to send you some articles. Okay. 
I, I, I won't believe like you, you know that doesn't work. I'm going to send you some articles. COVID yeah. is fake. Use the vaccines. I'll send you some articles. Exactly. That'll work. I'll send you some articles. Yeah. I, do your, G- Gabriel, do your do own you. research. <laughs> do, yeah, do, your, do your own research. Okay. I'll come back to you at the end of my rabbit hole. Um, actually, funnily enough, I've met uh, I've met some people who uh, in in your country who believe that there was some kind of shenanigans that happened in the mid 19th century, which meant that which means that America is actually still a colony of England and that it's, uh, it's an outpost of the city of London. There are quite a few people who believe that in your country. Do we get health care? <laughs> <laughs> Such a good point. Such a good point. I'll, I'll, ask, I'll ask about that. At the moment, our finances are a little stretched, but I'll see what we can do. That, that, that is true. Uh, I, I had not been aware of that. Wait, I was supposed to be explaining to you, I was supposed to be explaining to you, what, why were we going to lose our shit? Yeah, so, so we've been kind of cooking on the fumes yes. of empire since 1952 because we'd had mm-hmm. the queen on the throne and quietly, without our noticing it, the empire had disappeared. But we hadn't noticed because the queen was still there and it just kind of looked like the same kind of very powerful country where right. um, people announced the news like this. Yes, the queen today opened parliament. And so we hadn't noticed that the empire had quietly faded and Britain had quietly turned right. into a basket case. Um, uh, and then, so I was convinced that when the queen died, everyone would suddenly go, ooh, wait, we're, ooh, we're this kind of little... Little insignificant little yeah. island. Who are we now? Who oh. are we, right? right. Um, but actually, it, it seems like we didn't have time to do that because the the the, the politics of trust, the trustonomics, went went so berserk so quickly straight after the queen died that we've we've kind of deferred that reckoning. Isn't that a lovely thing? Hasn't she done a grand service then? Well, as, as to, uh, to a magnificent the, job. The, the kingdom, you know, rather than facing an existential crisis, you can now just uh, stand to what seems to be something more ephemeral, which is, oh, right, if we're trying to tame inflation, we shouldn't also at the same time just give rich people another tax break. And you can, you're back into a much more modern kind of reckoning as opposed to the existential reckoning, which by the way, and I can tell you this from experience in America, will never come. There will always be something that, that comes along to distract the populist from an existential reckoning. That's depressing, but I think I agree with you. I mean, that's what oh, they say I, about climate change, right? Every time, that, every time you want to do something about climate change, it's like, oh, that's but, right. no, but there's this politics thing that's more urgent and like we never actually that, get that, to that, That's with exactly it. right. The urgency of, you know, when you can say, well, the, the, the planet may ultimately... Uh, flood and people are like, I know, but three twenty-five a gallon. I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> and by the way, I understand it. You know, your sure. day to day people deal with their day to day, and sure. the economics of the day to day almost always supersede, you know, the existential. So, Gabriel, I'm curious. Speaking of the day to day, how did like the trustonomics affect the day to day for everyday folks? Okay, so uh, I. Uh, my my mortgage was coming up for renewal just as Liz Truss launched into her euphemistically called mini budget. It was like a mini hand grenade budget. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, the mini budget landed. Uh, mortgage rates went up through mm-hmm. the roof. Uh, I quickly, quickly, quickly managed to renegotiate my mortgage. So I'm now only paying... Two and a half times as much as I was before. Get Whoa, the fuck out of here. Oh my goodness. There you go. Personal true story. She did that in six weeks? Yeah. You know what they say about storytelling? Get in late, get out early. <laughs> Boom. And, and she tried to wash her hands of that, right? She tried to say, well, we don't, poli- politicians, the Bank of England sets mortgage rates, trying to divorce her policy choices from what they had to make up the budgetary impact of losing the taxes. Is that right? Right, yeah. So there was a big, uh, a big sort of to and fro between uh, the trust government and the Bank of England. Uh, the Bank of England has been independent of the government since 1997. So, so there was this kind of back and forth between, uh, you, you know, Liz Truss and her chancellor, Kwasi Kwarteng, who were like uh, lobbing these kind of grenades into the market and the markets were going mad. And, and, and the, the pound is, is crashing The pound is tanking. Point. And By so the then way, the ba- I, I looked at it and I was like, I should travel. You should come I should over. really, should I should really travel over. now. I'll take you for a drink. Actually, you, you'll be paying. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Uh, and so then the Bank of England was was buying up gilt and trying to um, shore up the market and trying to stop pension funds from imploding. It, it was like, it felt... Chaos. It, it chaos. generally felt, it genuinely felt like we were kind of holding on by our fingernails um, for a while. Um, and the interesting thing was, it wasn't just that um, the trust government was, was blaming the Bank of England and the Bank of England was kind of blaming the government. Um, and this wasn't coming from Liz Trust, but people in her circle, the people mm-hmm. who were, kind of, were saying, this is a coup, a coup by the market. So, so suddenly we started to hear that American language about kind of coups and cabals and elites, a coup, a coup by the elite, a coup a by the January market. January 6th of the doubloon. <laughs> well, it, it was not so much the, that kind of, a, not the January 6th kind of coup, but the kind of coup that they believe on the right that's been happening, you know, the, the, the kind of... The, oh, deep, the deep state. state. The de- yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Trump, take right. over the, the shadow okay. government. Now, by the way, we should exactly, point out, exactly. Liz Truss never actually enacted any of this. No, she just, all she had to do was open all, her mouth. All she did was say it. Yeah. <laughs> she said, this is what I'm going to do. There was no change. It's just, this is what's coming. But, but do you know and what? that's the, what happened. The, the, the reason why it went so berserk is, is because um, Kwasi Kwarteng, went out and announced it. That's her finance minister. That's, that's her finan- her finance that's right. minister. Who, uh, and they were tied at the hip. They were tied at the hip. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you've got to be a bit careful about that. They, they, were, they were good friends. <laughs> <laughs> BBC One, BBC Two. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so they, they, they came up with this kind of, uh, this policy together. It was a whole bunch of tax cuts um, mm-hmm. That were unfunded. Like they, they, they announced the tax cuts, but they didn't tell anyone how they were going to pay for it. So obviously the markets went mad. That's uh, what we do. That's that, now you're now you're just yeah, stealing yeah, yeah. the Republicans' ideas on economics from our country. I know. I like to think we do just follow slightly in your slipstream. Um, <laughs> but uh, and but what happened there after after announcing this? Quasi Kwarteng then uh, went for some drinks with some um, finance people. And let it be known that actually that was just the beginning. It was going to go further still. And of course that came out and then the markets went even more berserk. Oh, um, wow. And, and so every time there was a kind of moment to, and, and then, you know, then Liz Truss went on the BBC and uh, uh, my colleague asked her, are you committed to cutting tax for the richest people? And she went, she looked into the camera, she went, yes. <laughs> like, and so, so, okay. So the markets went, whoa. Um, and then, like, 24 hours later, she was like, okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then she, didn't she, fi- then she fired but Kwasi then, Kwarteng? Then, then she fired Kwasi Kwarteng uh, for, um, maybe this is the first time that a prime minister has fired her finance minister for agreeing with her. Yes. Um, but she, so she fired him. But You she, knew she, I was stupid <laughs> when you took the job. <laughs> <laughs> but she, she fired him without saying and actually the policies that he announced were a mistake. She fired him saying, I think the presentation uh, was was left a little bit to be desired, but you know, she basically implied wow. that she was gonna keep going. So like she just, they just kept doubling down until mm-hmm. uh, it became uh, completely unsustainable. Um, and then, uh, you know, and, and, and again, it was like, um, so I don't know, it feels like, it feels like a lifetime ago now, but I think it was in the right. last week. Um, one of my colleagues said, um, you know, are you going to be prime minister at the time of the next election? She goes, yes. <laughs> 24 hours Wait. later, it's like, I resign. <laughs> um, wow. So, so that's so exciting. Been, I know, I know. It's like, um, it's like the 12 Days of Christmas song. You know, we've had um, in the past three months, we've had four chancellors of the Exchequer, three prime ministers, two monarchs, and a partridge in a pear tree. Wow. <laughs> so, it, what, what an exciting time to be now, a journalist. It, it, to, to be a journalist, but, but uh, to be living there. Now, the, the new gentleman that came in, uh, who was a, a finance minister, and is, I think, could maybe take care of this from his own savings account, from what I understand. <laughs> yeah. This is my goodness. My, my introduction to Rishi Sunak, because I shouldn't know who he is as an American, but I remember like four months ago his that whole scandal with his wife, right? Where she has right. 700 million pounds and claimed non-domicile status so she could not pay taxes in England despite being married to the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Is that right? Right. And and one of the richest families in India. Um, yeah. And in fact, um, 
in fact, Rishi Sunak had a green card with you guys uh, until that came out and then he had to renounce it. Um, oh, that I didn't know. So, yeah, maybe maybe we'll send him over to you once he's done here. Once, once, um, once well, Gollum so that, is in. So you're you saying he's him. coming in six weeks. Is that what you're saying? Because now <laughs> six isn't days, it every six, six days. weeks? <laughs> six days. Well, he, he'd fit right in. We love, we love our Goldman Sachs in politics here. <laughs> yeah. That's a conspiracy right there. <laughs> Oh boy, I, I got to I'm, I'm gonna have to tap out on this one. <laughs> I don't know if you know, it's been kind of a rough week for my guys down here too. So we'll we're we're checking out uh, uh, on that. But but have things stabilized? Uh, I mean, it's been like a matter of hours, literally, um, right. since he came in. Uh, I think. Have you had to renegotiate your mortgage again? No, my mortgage is now fixed at this eye-wateringly high rate for the next five years. Oh so, my God. I, so wait, I you have to renegotiate mortgages every five years? Yeah, or even like every two. Like it just right. depends on how you like yeah, a car yeah. lease. Yeah. It's basically yeah, a car yeah, yeah, lease yeah, 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 for yeah, a house. So you're take they they prefer you you pays your money, you takes your chances. Right. Yes, it's the market, the tyranny of the market. Gabriel, so the, I have to tell you something. This is what's been. Because we spoke, I, I, how many months ago was it, Gabriel? It was six was months it? ago, seven months yeah. ago. Yeah, January, February, something like that. Uh, you were back then, if I may, handsome, confident, uh, <laughs> a young, a young I, man, full of vigor, I full don't of like life, where this is going. looking forward to the horizon of of a future that you knew you were the captain of. And now I feel like this is a group therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> your your world has spun out in, in a very interesting way because you were so ensconced in the world of conspiracy theories and and those who believe that there were uh, you know secret uh, forces at play that were controlling and now you're living through a moment of true instability within your own country that's not necessarily conspiratorial, but very real. But you know what, John? I've just yeah. come back from Florida um, where I attended something <laughs> called... Yeah. Is that, was that to feel better about your situation? I, I, totally. Wow. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I, am just, uh, I am just batting this away. I am sidestepping the question. I'm doing a politician on you. Beautifully I've just done. Been to, I've just been to Florida where I attended a conference called NatCon 3. <laughs> N NatCon stands for National Conservatism. Uh, oh, do uh, all those, do they just have conferences in the Conservative Party? There's CPAC and NatCon and what? what NatCon makes CPAC look like a teddy bear's picnic. Wow. Really? Uh, um, that's scary. <laughs> so NatCon, uh, I went there because uh, my, if you remember um, what we were talking about last time was The Coming Storm, this, this podcast series that I've Correct. done. Um, and I'm doing a podcast, it, by the way, for those who uh, have not gotten a chance to check it out. It's the, Gabriel's coverage of the QAnon phenomenon here in the United States and, and around the world, really, and, and what it means to the various yeah, policies. The, the, the long roots of, of January the 6th, and we can Correct. go all the way back into the nice. Anyway, we're making a few extra episodes, which are going to land um, on, in uh, the first half of November around your midterm elections. Oh. So I thought I would go to this NatCon conference to find out mm -hmm. what had happened to this QAnon energy, like the, this energy that had kind of fueled January the 6th mm -hmm. um, and this whole kind of election-denying movement. What's happened to it? And where's oh, it going? and you're about to say, if I may, and I hate to jump the gun on this because yeah, I don't want to give spoilers, completely gone. It's, it's gone. You're fine. Back, it's, everything's back to normal. Everybody's come back to earth. Everyone, everyone accepts the election result. Joe Biden is the legitimately elected president of Boy, your country. Gabriel, I'm so glad you had a chance Aren't to look at that. Aren't you relieved? Aren't you relieved? Yes, I uh, am. Sadly, John, it's the opposite. I mean, I think, I think we all know that half the country doesn't believe uh, that your president is uh, legitimately your president. Mm. Uh, but uh, th there were two things I took away from from this conference of proud conservative nationalists. What has happened to QAnon kind of split into two things, or it had two main components. One was mm -hmm. the election was stolen, mm -hmm. and two, it was stolen by a cabal of satanic pedophiles. Now, the election was stolen. Wait, just wait, 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 wait. Whoa, you don't want to just let that pass? I no. <laughs> Okay. So, okay. so Fine. there is a kind of a, a more grounded part of the QAnon movement yeah. that's like, no, no, no. The election was stolen, but not by a cabal of satanic pedophiles. So the the argument 
amongst QAnon is we both agree it's stolen, but where we part ways, my friend, is who stole it. I say a cabal of satanic pedophiles, and the other people say, just a cabal. (laughs) <laughs> um, that, that's that's kind of one of the arguments amongst QAnoners. I mean, there are other arguments amongst QAnoners, like uh, which random weird guy is actually the um, reincarnation of John F. Kennedy Jr., who um, is still alive. I mean, those are other arguments that are going on uh, in those spaces. This um, is discussed openly. Yeah, sure. What you haven't but- you haven't never wondered which random guy that you know might be John F. Kennedy's dead son. I have not. <laughs> John, you haven't lived. <laughs> but, but I'm not tech savvy, so I can't do my own research. That, that's my problem. problem. Okay, Gabriel, boomer. Okay, <laughs> boomer. <laughs> Gabriel, isn't it more than a QAnon split, isn't it? I mean, QAnon, they continued down the you know, satanic blood drinking cult, and then rank and file Republicans seem to just think the election was stolen by a cabal. Right. Exactly, exactly. So, so the, the idea of the, the deep state stealing the election has just been absorbed into mainstream American It's a mainstream, politics. yes. That's it's right, a, it's that's a mainstream right. opinion now. In fact, it's quite hard to get on in the Republican Party if you don't at least publicly subscribe to that opinion. Uh, you're likely to face... I, be, I believe the word is impossible to get on yes. in the Republican Party. And, and if you do say it wasn't, not only is it hard to get on, they will actively destroy you. Mm-hmm. Indeed, indeed. Um, the satanic pedophiles bit seem to have disappeared. Uh, Like I was Mm -hmm. walking around this conference, no one was talking about um, satanic pedophiles, but they were all talking about something else, which I think has replaced the idea of the satanic Mm pedophiles. And that is, is one word, groomers. They're all obsessed with groomers. And what they believe is grooming is... Anyone it's not, it's, who, not me, it's not metrosexuals you're talking about. It's, it's not, not metrosexuals. It's not taking okay. your poodle to the to the doggy hairdresser. Um, All right. It is people doing gender education in schools. It is drag queen story hour. It mm-hmm. is chest surgery for minors in hospitals. This is what is consuming and firing up and energizing all of that part of of the political forest. We did an episode on on, on gender where we tried to figure out uh, what exactly was uh, driving that. And it seems like they're latching on to very small communities and taking this as a writ large existential threat to their right. primacy. Right, right. I think I think that's I think that's right. But the thing the thing that struck me was that actually uh, this has become an incredibly potent force and mm. much more potent than this idea of a cabal of satanic pedophiles. What happened the, to that? How did well, that go away? You know, that, that just sort of felt a little far-fetched and like no one could find any evidence that it was actually happening. Well, they, they, they could find a little bit of evidence of it, but it was mostly Republican operatives who keep getting arrested for pedophilia. Well, there was also Jeffrey Epstein, but anyway, let's not... Uh, yes, uh, 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 as, yeah. as well. As well. Um, but, but on the other hand, so, so this, this idea of groomers, um, mm-hmm. you know, at least has the advantage of re- re- referencing something that is actually happening, right? It is true that there are drag queen story hours in which the, 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 the stated aim is to uh, you introduce children to um, queer role models. And, and if, you, if you think that that is evil or satanic mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. grooming, in effect, then, then you're like, ha, huh, this is actually, actually happening. And like they, they will see videos of Drag Queen Story Hour where somebody is dressed maybe in quite a suggestive manner that they don't think is appropriate for children. And these things do okay. happen. Let's, let's, let's not, you know, let's not pretend that they aren't. And then they go, hey, what the hell is this, right? What, what the actual, you know, um, there are always instances of right. people. Have you seen, have you, have you ever seen child pageants? Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a very, very dodgy thing. It's weird. But that's a phenomenon in, in, 
largely conservative areas yeah, 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 where yeah. children are dressed up as, as dressed in up as, very as, provocative as, ways and paraded around. And it, so I'm, I'm just trying to wrap my head around why one creates a panic and the other is like it's, good, you, clean American fun. You, you're completely right. It's a moral panic. It's, it's, it's absolutely a moral panic. I think that a lot of people, not just on the right, um, the people who are, there are absolutely people who are using this issue cynically for electoral gain. And they are, they're using the word groomers because they know that groomers says pedophiles and it's like, it's just a dog whistle and it, it's the kind of next okay. incarnation of Q, right? Yeah. That is happening. Absolutely. I feel like, you know, if, if you're in the United States of America and you really are worried about pedophilia and, uh, you know, the safety of children, you go to Stewards of Children, uh, the website, and you figure out how to take those classes and the, all, all this stuff. But in my mind, like gender binary and all that stuff, it really is, I think, in combination with the great replacement theory and thinking yeah, about, it, uh, you know, like if I'm a white man and they're trying to say that, oh, you can be anything. They're getting rid of masculinity and they're getting rid of right. uh, whiteness. And it's sort of this thing that is sort of threatens your position with the United States of America. And I imagine there, there's some similar feeling uh, You're saying across. To Cara that, that their suggestion is there's no ceiling on that. That this Absolutely. Is a con it's a contagion rather than a subset of actual people who are merely now expressing themselves and, and society is trying to figure out how to adapt to that complexity. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of people feel like you are taking away the, 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 the boundaries of my life. I, mm -hmm. I now feel unmoored. Like if you're suddenly saying to me, all these years I thought that there were men and there were women. And then now suddenly you're saying, hold on a second. There are like all these other genders and men can become women and women can go back. And, and people are like, ah, I feel lost. Where the hell am I? Where, where are the boundaries of my, of my world? But the boundaries still exist. It's merely suggesting there is this other, you know, there is a subset. There's a Venn diagram. It's men and women and, and they're gigantic. But there is a little area that for some people exists. And that's, I, I don't know why that's so complicated. And, and the crazy part is like, if you really want to protect children, you know, the poverty rate for children in this country is astonishing. The food insecurity for children in this country is astonishing. And the numbers are astonishing. And so it's this incredibly virulent, volatile focus on this one kind of ancillary issue that doesn't throw, like I would think that your world be, would become unmoored. If someone said to you, we let children starve in a fucking country of wealth and prosperity. I would think there'd be nothing more to unmoor you than that. Uh, th 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 that's, that's the thing that, that is upsetting. I think that's a, a very, very valid point. But I think that sadly in America and also in Britain, like we also have, you know, people who are, you know, living if they don't get their lunch at their free school meals, they're not going to get a meal, right, kids? Um, yeah. So we also have this problem. Sadly, we're kind of, what are we, inured to this? We, 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 we hear this on our news bulletins and it washes over us like a sort of lukewarm, mm. dirty bath water thing. And we're like, that's just the way the world is. But right. this issue which is now being channeled into this kind of QAnonish groomers thing. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's electrifying. It's electrifying everybody. It's firing people up. And, right. and that, I think, is, is where that, that, that segment of the QAnon energy has gone. Uh, and, Gabriel, how extensive yeah. is it? Because I would think that energy is not just QAnon, that that energy is, is more widespread. Listen, there's no easier target than trans people or, you know, it's just, it's just easy. I think that's right. And, and that's why it's so powerful um, and so dangerous because it, you not only manage to pull in a lot more people who are worried about this issue than would normally kind of go down a QAnon rabbit hole, but you're also saying that the institutions of the state, specifically the ones that are there to look after your children's education and your children's health care are in fact what? Pedophiles.
That's what that's what that's, that, that is what groomers says, right? And wow. and that word, that pedophile word, is so strong, so awful, so hideous that right. it, it kind of it kind of just drives people nuts, and that's the danger of it. And also, there is a certain listen. There is a reality to when you send a kid to school, their shit's going to go down that you don't agree with, right? I mean, that's you know, that we, you don't we've know experienced about. that either in, you know, an overreach on liberal policy and overreach on conservative policy. Like there's all kinds of shit An overreach on grading policy. Like there's yeah. all kinds of yeah. shit yeah. and there's nothing more powerful than these people are in charge of your children. Yeah, absolutely. Nothing more powerful. Where do you see this going, Gabriel? You're, you know. So look, so, so I was at this conference uh, and the one thing they were all talking about was groomers. And then the other thing they were all talking about was they don't do you know this they don't call the uh biden administration they don't call it the illegitimate biden administration they don't call it the the, the government that we hate you know what they call it the regime they call it the regime right and it's not just the government the, by the regime they mean the government the journalists me um, Facebook, Twitter, Silicon Valley, uh, oh, the Justice Department, the wow. FBI. Basically, they are running hard on this idea that the regime has got everything sewn up. And again, right. they've got something. They've got a Trump card, um, if you'll excuse the pun. I won't. Which, <laughs> okay, I take it back. <laughs> I take it back. Um, they've got a card which, which they believe shows everyone that they are right, that there is a regime and that there is a deep state effort to stop Donald Trump or whoever his, his heir and successor might end up being um, from ever uh, achieving the White House again. And it is Hunter Biden's laptop. Now, Wait, what? Yeah. Hunt, you, know, you know Hunter Biden had a laptop. I'm, I'm not aware. No, <laughs> of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, you but, may, but, but why but is that? So that is evidence of a cover up. Is, okay. is that what the so suggestion is? So let me tell is? you that. Let me tell you the story in brief. So okay. um, in October 2020, um, the New York Post published the story saying that Hunter Biden had left his laptop in a, a Mac repair shop in Delaware, uh, never yes. picked it up, and they'd got hold of it and they published some stories. And their stories mm -hmm. basically suggested that um, Hunter Biden was making money for the whole Biden family through a bunch of corrupt companies in Ukraine That's and right. China. The, and the big guy gets gets a cut. The big 10 guy. Ten percent for the big guy. Right. So that yeah. was one of the emails on there when they were figuring out how to divvy up um, this Chinese joint venture that was working with a company that was sort of connected to the Chinese Communist Party. And it was mm -hmm. like there was this line that wasn't written by Hunter Biden. It was written by one of his business partners, but they were suggesting how to divvy it up. And it was eight, 10 percent to be held by H. That's Hunter for the big guy. Oh. And the assumption was that that was Joe Biden. So mm -hmm. the, the picture that emerged, this is, remember, three weeks out before the 2020 election, was that That's there right. was some kind of distinctly stinky uh, money stuff going on, and the evidence was on this laptop. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if you remember what happened to that story at the time, but... Yeah, it got, it, 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 it got basically, squished. people said, this is Russian misinformation. Yeah. That there was no laptop or something, information. something along those lines. Correct. That's right. That's right. And I That's remember, right. I, I remember when I was going around America trying to kind of gather my stuff for the coming storm and I was trying to figure out what the hell QAnon was. There was this other conspiracy theory that was going out and everyone was going, what about Hunter Biden's laptop, man? And right. I, I remember exactly what I thought. I was like, I don't, I just don't have the bandwidth for another conspiracy theory. I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to touch this. This is, this is such bullshit, right? I'm not, I am literally not even going to go there. Uh, right. And that's what I did. I ignored it. Well, big mistake it turned out the laptop was real right facebook uh, essentially censored the story twitter locked the new york post out of its account uh 50 former national security experts and officials came out and said it was russian disinformation turned out that not only was it real but the fbi had the had the bloody laptop all this time hadn't really right. looked on it um right. hadn't figured out and then it took it took the establishment media uh -huh. um, in the US, the, the New York Times and the Washington Post, let's say, the kind of, you know, the big boys, the serious yes. boys. It took them nearly <laughs> two years, and yeah. girls, um, uh, nearly two years to uh, go through the laptop, as, as you expect they would do, so some serious journalism, uh, showed some cybersecurity experts, and mm -hmm. go, huh, do you know what? 
actually, turns out this thing is real. It's real. Yeah. But like that wasn't big news. This was not, this did not, like there was no kind of, oh my God, like, there, and so what does it tell us? And, and, oh my God, we really, we really, really fucked up there because we suppressed this story three weeks out from an election that could have made a difference. Do you know what I mean? There was none of that. It was just like, yeah, but we looked at it and it's just kind of oof, business as usual. Well, to some degree, isn't this, you know, uh, and I don't want to excuse the media because in general they are terrible at what they do, but aren't, <laughs> isn't this the consequences of Boy Who Cried Wolf from QAnon? Right, no, I mean, it, if you're it, firing it, off conspiracies constantly, eventually yeah. you're going to say, this is probably another bullshit lead. I, I don't have time for it 10 days before 100%, an election. 100%. As Steve Bannon said, flood the zone oh my goodness. with shit. Right? Right, right. Uh, uh, so... And 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 you know how the, the the laptop made its way into the media via Steve Bannon. So so, kind of, I right. assumed this was Steve Bannon flooding the zone with shit, and that's why I ignored it. Even, but that, let's say it wasn't. Let's let's go back and just suggest. Yeah. Brief, and and that's not to excuse saying it's Russian misinformation, but uh, let's say it was real, and people just thought. Well, the one thing in it maybe is 10% to the big guy, which is circumstantial at best. But as far as like, look, Hunter Biden being on the board of- uh, Burisma, Gazprom, Bur that would be Burisma, really that's right, Burisma. Uh, to me, that's corruption straight up off the bat. Like, you right. know, they, they, right. yes. right. they always call it a corrupt Ukrainian gas company. That's like, you don't need to say that. All Ukrainian yeah, gas <laughs> companies are corrupt. And by the way, all American yes. gas companies are pretty corrupt. Like, how dare you, sir? So it's all fucking corrupt. But but so what we're saying, we're saying that we're is, not surprised. It's not even that I'm not surprised. It's that it's corrupt on its face. I don't need a laptop with like a hint of circumstantial evidence. Now, tying Joe Biden to it, yeah, that's going to take some digging. And if it's real, you know, that's a thing. But- the idea that nepotism would allow much larger amounts of money to flow into the hands of people unqualified uh, to be in the positions that they've been accepted because you think those countries are trying to buy influence. Yeah, welcome to the fucking world. And right, but you, I, think, but I, I think it's a huge problem on its you, face. Forget yeah, about yeah, yeah. any secret laptop. But, you know, the, the problem is... Mm -hmm. for the uh, American media and, and the British media as well, because I think it's good to be self-critical, is that it is true that we collectively spent the entire Trump administration trying to figure out if Donald Trump had ever been to Moscow, let alone peed on a bed with some prostitutes in the Ritz-Carlton. <laughs> and about, you know, whether or not um, Donald Trump's children were using the White House to kind of pump up their own brands and profit from like we li literally that consumed right. which, the, the which, whole by the of way, America. They, they were. We, I mean well, they right, they were, absolutely. Yeah. So that's which consumed corruption. the whole of America for four yes. years. Um and it turned out there wasn't a P tape. But anyway, never mind. Um which was a shame because I would have loved to have seen that. But um not in a not in a Gabriel, weird way, I, just in a political I, I, way. I don't need sure, to sure, know sure. that. Sure, sure, sure. In a political way. I don't, yes. I don't need to know that you wanted to see that <laughs> tape. I really way. don't need to know that. Hey, I have look. similar tapes I could send you. No, I don't. <laughs> oh, yeah. can, can I just tell you something? I yes. have seen. No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> right. I have seen the contents of Hunter Biden's laptop. Um, and I think that it is... Uh, so, so the, you know, the email about 10% for the big guy, it's there. Yeah. Uh, the email that kind of seems to suggest that Joe Biden, um, went to a restaurant in Washington DC and met a representative of the Ukrainian gas company, uh, which he then said he didn't, it's there. Right. So, right, right, right. so there is some there, there, there's no so question. There, there is, there is absolutely some there, there. Let me also tell you what else is there. Like it, this is also a picture of a guy who's going off the rails, right? He's got addiction problems. His brother has died. Mm. His marriage is falling apart. He's having an affair with his sister-in-law and he is addicted to drugs, right? And so in in a way, you're, you're looking at this thing for the kind of for the politics of it and, mm -hmm. and trying to figure out, you know, are they right in saying that there is a deep state um, conspiracy to hide high-level corruption? I mentioned this 
because if you mm -hmm. type in Hunter Biden laptop into Google, you will right. find lots of suggestions that there was child porn on there. I have looked through this laptop. There's a lot of dodgy stuff on there. There's a lot of porn on there. There's right. a lot of emails suggesting fishy deals with, with corrupt companies. Right. There is no child porn on Hunter Biden's laptop. Just for the record. Well, thank you, thank Gabriel, you. for setting the record straight <laughs> on that. Well, With the lowest know, I mean, bar it, imaginable. Yeah. Yes, uh, well, that is, that is a, kind of a, a little banner little, falls behind his confetti. Like, look, yeah. look through this thing. It is filled with crimes. <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you what's not on there. I did not say that. <laughs> this one crime. But the point of saying that is that, you know, this one crime would blow all the other potential crimes but let out me, of water. Let me, let me say this. All conspiracies have hints of truth. Mm -hmm. Some end up being true. Some end up not. But... They're very convenient in that any hint can be used to justify any accusation that you want to level against it. And there has to be a certain bar of reality that goes along with the aroma of corruption and cover-up and deep state. I don't think I would ever push back on the idea that powerful people do incredibly corrupt things for their own benefit and cover the fuck up out of it. Like, no question in my mind. But that doesn't mean there's always that logical jump that, that, that becomes fallacious, which is, and because of that, everything is real that I that's believe. Right. And yeah, you could go back, and, and if you want to criticize the media, you could go back and say, boy, did they make a meal out of Hillary Clinton's emails. And I mean obsessively, day in and day out. And maybe the thought was, Hunter Biden isn't running for president. He's a troubled guy. Maybe there is some stuff on there in corruption, and it's certainly worth looking out for. But the idea that anything that's thrown like a hand grenade into an election three weeks out must be uh, covered wall to wall in the way that they did those emails, like, I, I don't agree with either. No, so but this we're, is the we're problem. At kind of a weird point. It, but the problem is that it's it's happened now. It's a bit like the stolen election thing. Like um, you know, like once once you've let that, once you've done it once, it's like for fairness, you've got to do it again, right? Like no, so. But but, once but now you've got this thing like Hunter Biden's laptop wasn't covered right, so the election was stolen from Donald Trump. That's my point. Is you can have things that are absolutely justifiable and real. As, yeah, but, but, but can, uh, I just, can I just put yeah. a counterfactual for, to, for a second? Because Hillary Clinton Please. believes that um, she lost the election to Donald Trump in 2016 because of the reopening of the investigation into her email server, right? And that right. kind of, that basically, it was really tight, tight election. That happened. Um, James Comey announced that he was reopening the investigation and that lost it for her. That's what she believes, right? Now, That's correct. It, it is not inconceivable that if the press had made wall-to-wall -wall meal out of Hunter Biden's laptop and 10% for the big guy and the Burisma meeting in the weeks running up to the 2020 election, mm -hmm. given how close the result was in the key states that decided it, it isn't mm -hmm. inconceivable, uh, not as a conspiracy theory, but just as cephology, it is not inconceivable that we would have a different result, I think. I guess so. I mean, it's one of those things where you say, right, and if they had made, you know, a uh, a wall-to-wall -wall coverage of, you know, the children of Donald Trump's business dealings and had been much more, yeah, but you know, then couldn't that have been? The, I mean, isn't that if uh, ifs and buts were candy it, it, and nuts? It, it, it is, it is, but it's, but, but it's also like that's where we are now. We're in the, we're in the world of, uh, you know, you did it, so we've got to do it back to you. And, and you know, we're, we're in the world where, uh, you know, the Republicans, you can't see a way in which they're ever going to accept another election that they lose. Like how, how, how do you put that genie back in the bottle? That, but that do you really get... think that, all, honestly, Gabriel, do you think that their inability to accept an election that they lose is all tied back to media malpractice on Hunter Biden's no, laptop? No, 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 absolutely not. No, sorry, to clarify... Uh, they don't accept the election because they didn't want to lose. <laughs> that's, um, that's what I'm what saying. I'm, is but that, that's my point. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, but what I'm saying is that is like, regardless of Hunter Biden's laptop or the state of the media or anything else, the, mm -hmm. the stolen election 
is the genie that cannot be put back in the bottle. Like you cannot, whatever happens, however oh, great the media is. good, we have midterms coming up uh, in two weeks. This is exciting. <laughs> good luck trying to stuff it back in. Um, like they're, they're not going to accept elections that they lost, right? You, you, they, you, can't, you can't walk back from that. And how do you, um, how do you coexist in a democratic ecosystem mm. where w- one half of the game players do not believe in the rules or like how do you play that game anymore well the only way you can play that game is by meeting them by by reinventing the rules and meeting them on that playing field and i've just seen a, a clip from hillary clinton where she says folks they're preparing that the republicans they are preparing to steal the 2024 election mark my words they're preparing to steal it now what did we hear from Donald Trump in the run-up to the 2020 election? Folks, they're preparing to steal the election, right? I think, and, and this is where I think, just to go back to the beginning of our conversation, mm-hmm. where I think that politics in our country, chaotic and messy though it is, hasn't quite caught up with the nightmare that is politics in your country. <laughs> is that... <laughs> it, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Must is, be nice. Uh, it's not nice because I, uh, partly because I love America and partly because I know that everything oh. that happens uh, where you are comes yeah. to us sooner or later. That's true. Yeah, but, we are patient but, uh, zero in a lot of in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah. But I, but I just, I just don't see how the game can be played anymore. I think it's over. Democracy is at some level is a gentleman's agreement. It is right. consent of the governed. And if the governed do not consent, then you no longer have the fabric of a democracy to fall back on. And the hope is, is that we have enough civic infrastructure to withstand what maybe is a temporal disruption and not a permanent fissure. Um, and I do believe, you know, you speak about maybe crossing a Rubicon. I still believe in a pendulum and maybe that pendulum is swinging wildly in a way that seems broken and chaotic. But I do hope that if we get to a certain point, and I don't want to say cooler heads will prevail, but the abyss will be so devastating to peer into that people will step back. But I, again, that's, you know, that's as optimistic a version of it as I possibly can, can muster. And it's not as though we haven't, well, and it's not as though we haven't been in this place in previous eras. Everyone thinks it's a fait accompli that we joined up with the allied powers and we battled fascism and we killed that, but that was not predestined. But that's not to say that if that battle was repeated, we would join that same side. Could have ended up in Philip Roth's The Plot Against America. Right, or, or many of those other things. But mm. you know, when I look at it now, when you see that half the country is lining up behind you know, Putin and Orban and other people that are more ultra-nationalistic and uh, have different views, I'm not so sure that we do join up to defend democracy. Or we just redefine what we think defending democracy is and join up with whatever that is. So history is always, those fulcrums are always tenuous. And uh, I I think I have more faith ultimately in people's ability to walk that tightrope Honestly, I don't, and, and I and I, I wish I had something to back that up for you. I wish I had, <laughs> I wish I had a reason other than a deep abiding belief that most people want to be left the fuck alone and have peaceful, prosperous lives. That's it. Sometimes, sometimes a bit of faith is enough. <laughs> <laughs> Gabriel, you're killing me. You're killing <laughs> I'm sorry. Me here. I'm sorry. Well, I, I was trying to be supportive. <laughs> uh, boy, Gabriel, it's such a pleasure to talk to you. As it as really always, uh, fascinating stuff, and your insights into that are 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 really fantastic. And so I, I truly appreciate it. 
Uh, thank you so much. It's It's been a real joy, as ever. And uh, Takara and Robbie, too. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you. 